welcome to the Rabbitohs Top 4 Podcast. Proudly presented by What If, official travel and pathways partner of the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Here are your hosts, Mark Ellison, Shannon Donato and Jeremy Monahan. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rabbitohs Top 4 podcast, powered by Audio Technica and proudly presented by What If. What If has you covered for accommodation, flights, car hire and more. So if you're looking for a holiday, travelling for business or you need to get to the next game, visit whatif.com slash Rabbitohs. What If, it's Aussie for travel. My name is Jeremy Monaghan. I'm the media manager here at the Rabbitohs and joined by my co-hosts in Mark Ellison and Shannon Donato. Ello, welcome back from your week away. Thanks, Jeff. It's, it's great to be back. Uh, I really missed you, but Chatter, not so much. <laughs> not so much. But, I was uh, a little away last week. Maybe I couldn't tell. Well, you. I, I could tell because the ratings went down oh, last yeah. week. <laughs> so did the bistro takings. <laughs> Very good. Good start, Chad. How, how was your break? Yeah, it was good. It was good, uh, Jez. It's, it's a nice time of year when with the boy happens to just get away with a, for a break with Raylene and uh, a couple of friends. And um, and the guide dog. And the guide dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably a good segue. I mean, I heard a story about Chad. And while I was away, they said he's turned vegan. Yes. He's now actually only eating cows that eat. A grass fed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very oh, good. No, it's a good, a good break, Jez. We got a, a, you know, halfway through the season, we're in a really good position, and uh, I'm looking forward to the run in. Very good, Shannon. How are you this morning? I'm great, really well. Uh, great to have Elo back. It's uh, it was too easy last week. No, no competition. <laughs> no, no one fighting back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Right. Well, let's get into uh, something that we've learnt this week. I'll kick off with you, Shannon. What have you learnt this week? I've learnt how strong our juniors are. We, you know, I, I went out and watched them. We had the bye on the weekend, so I went out and um, watched some local league on Sunday. I watched our three pathway sides, our 21s, our New South Wales Cup and our Harvey New- Norman's women's premiership side playing on the weekend and and. and the ladies, they had a, a very strong win. The 21s are a bit unlucky. And uh, and even watching the A grade on the Sunday, you know, it's just a really strong competition. And then I remembered about the six boys that we signed, uh, the the six young juniors coming through the hall, fantastic players. And three of those are born and bred juniors in uh, Blake Taft, Pete Mamazoulis, and Davey Mawali. And, and the other boys have played in our, our juniors as well. And then there's other kids like... Um, you know, tell us Duncan and, and and Lockie Gale coming through. So, I just m- made me take stock. You know, the fact that we had the buy watching the junior league, just how strong we are, and what a great production line our junior league is. And it's a credit to uh, Luke Curry, Keith McGraw, the whole board at the juniors, in terms of uh, how good a, a junior grassroots system we've got. And of course, a credit to as much as it pains me to say, Ello and Joe O'Callaghan, the the great pathways they've set up for our for our junior league. So you're at Redfern Oval. You went to some of the junior games. Can you compare the pies for us? Who had the best pies? Well, they're both Garlow's pies, and they're both impeccable. Um, and I had uh, the curry pie at uh, Redfern uh, at the high. Iron Mark High Performance Centre at Redford, and I had the plain beef uh, at Heffron Park, and I wasn't disappointed either day. There we go. Very good. Ella, what have you learnt this week? <laughs> I've just learnt that, that Shannon loves pies on a bike. Well, uh, You've just uh, learnt that. You've just learnt that. What I've learnt is nothing's changed, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> They're all grass-fed curry pies. <laughs> so, what, I'm lear- what I've learnt is I'm appalled that, you know, leading into our origin, that that... The players are talking about not taking dives. Yeah, I know. Since when has that been a part of our game? Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? Taking dives. They, they, they're trying to stop players taking dive, dives on the eve of our, you know, one of, obviously the most important game of the season for, for the NRL at this stage. Um, you know, I, I even watch, since the crackdown on the on the head knocks, I think there's a, a distinguishing point that's happening too and how we could probably work out sin bins and things like that. You see a player get whacked across the head. Accidental a lot of the time. We've got no doubt of that, but we don't want it in our game. Mm. But they appeal to the ref when they're still standing up. Now, if they're in a position where they can appeal to the ref after getting a, a slap across the face or whatever it is, surely that's not a sin bin offence. Yep. yep. Now, if it goes to a, an area where, you know, they're obviously stung by the, the hit in the face or the, in the head, obviously that needs a different 
penalty. Yep. You know, so that's when they go to the sin bin. Now, the fact that they're even talking about dives, particularly when the game is going through this transition of making sure people aren't getting hit around the head, I think is important. And the, no dives. The, dives for one, English soccer. There was one last week... And I'm not going to say the player's name because I find it very embarrassing for him, but it was in the Tigers game. And he copped an accidental shot um, up around the neck and the chin. He appealed as he was falling to the ground to the referee, as you said, got the referee's attention, was appealing to the referee. The referee blew a penalty straight away. He jumped to his feet straight away and laughed at the bloke that tackled him. Now... We spoke about Paul Kent last week, and it's not often that I agree with a lot of stuff that Kent says. But one of the things that he's said over the weekend and, and this week on NRL 360 is if if a player does dive and hits the deck because he's been hit in the head, he should have to go for an HIA. So if you're willing to take a dive to try and earn a penalty for your team, you are out of the game for 15 minutes. Yeah, I mean, that's, that and makes sense. And that'll sets. stop it. It's a good disincentive, absolutely. It is. It'll stop it. And it might have to get to the point where it's a blatant one, like that one on the weekend where the bloke literally jumped straight to his feet and laughed at the guy in front of him. The referee reverses the penalty. Yep. And just says, sorry, I'm changing that penalty, and maybe you can go and spend 10 in the bin. Because yeah. yep. it's a disgusting look for the game. It's something that we've mocked other sports, <laughs> saying that rugby league is one of the toughest sports in the country. And everyone, no one wants to see blokes getting hit high and getting knocked out. But they also don't want to see blokes taking dives like, as you say, you see in the soccer. Yeah, they, they call it gamesmanship. But, I mean... It's called it, cheating. Yeah, That's yeah. what it well, is. The, the, the thing is, <laughs> it just makes it harder on the referees... You know, and the match review committee to have to deal with it as a result of that. Yeah. Now, the match review committee cops a lot of you know, criticism and that, and they. That's and, just from you, though, Ella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the judiciary panel. But I'm going to say there was one they got right on the weekend, which which is a you know well done to them. It was a Rima Smith tackle in mm. the in that in the game where the Titans and the and Storm. Now, obviously, everyone says the Storm. They're always out that. You know, they want to get their nail and things like that. But this one, directly the player spun off a player in a ta- in the guy next to Remus. The guy spun out and he, he's centre of gravity, his head dropped by about a foot. Yep. Remus is coming to make the tackle and he did get him around the head, there's no doubt. And it was a grade two. So but they went to the judiciary and they got downgraded to a grade one, which is which is a fine. Now, I thought that was a good decision. Yeah. And I can see why. Because the player did get hurt in the incident, but it was, was an accident. There's yeah, accidents it was, it was falling, yeah. Yeah, he was falling. And so um, that's one that was I think was really well handled. Yeah. Yeah, I, look, I, I, I concur with both of you, and that's quite rare as well. But um, <laughs> it just goes against the DNA of our sport. Our sport is built on tough, you know, physically dominating and just taking a dive, like, you know, they're going to have the bloody gold logie at the Dally M Awards at the end of the year yeah. for, for for acting if they keep that up. And, well, you know, as you said, it just disgusts everybody who loves our sport. And, and because it's such a sensitive issue and it's such a big issue in our game, we're, we're seeing how many of the older players from the past where, you know, copping knocks around the head, sort of, there was no videos back in the day yeah. and not everyone could watch everything. So, you know, a lot of that was occurring. Mm. But now, when you know, the NRL is setting such a stance on it, whether you like it or not, mm. uh, it's stopping litigation down the game. It's trying to help young kids participate in the game. Yep. Um, so we've we've got to we've got to get behind it, and the players are the ones that can do it. Yes. So they no dives, no dives, and it'll change the whole outlook on it. Yep. Yep, no, I agree. I we'll agree. He's come, a, he's come back the, firing. That's, nice. it's, it's the boy who cried wolf. <laughs> yeah. You know, the next time that a bloke, that bloke from the Tigers takes a dive, the next time he cops one around the chops, everyone's going to go, oh, he's not hurt. Yeah, very true. You know, so anyway, good start, Ello. No, yeah, no, I no. Like I, it. I'm just passionate about it because I'm passionate about the game as well as the Rabbitohs, but I, I just see this as, you know, it's a pretty. Interesting time in our game and what we're trying to Big do, on it. and if we get behind and back the NRL on it, yep. I mean, it just makes there's only positives will come out of if it's handled properly. They're trying to do the right thing. Yep, the players can just stop taking dives, and it'll, within a month we'll have forgotten about it, and we'll have thought it's been in for ten years. Yeah, that's right. Hey, hey Jez, what have you learnt this week? Because uh, I've learned LA segment goes on for about fifteen minutes to start with. Uh, what have well, you learned this week? On the theme of LA, 
I've I've learned just how important LO is to our podcast. Now, last week we had Anthony Maroon in. We barely had a laugh. It wasn't yeah. there was no comedic value at all. We didn't bag each other about our weight. No, nah. it was really boring. So, welcome back, LO. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> it's great to yes. have you back. It's good sarcasm. <laughs> 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 Speak slowly, the lowest, for you, the, the lowest form of wit. <laughs> yes. No, we've got to thank Anthony Maroon for coming in last week. It was a great laugh, and he gave us a, a great insight into his career and uh, how he became one of the voices of Triple M and the NRL and how it started in Inverell and getting locked out of his <laughs> studio. He, he used to work to, for pies he, as well. Yeah, he went to get a pie. <laughs> what was it, COVID back then, was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a great Wake Maroon. I've had a, had a bit to do with him over the years. Yep. He's, yeah. He's a great rabbit supporter, but yep. just, just a, a great people supporter as yeah. well. Well, he does a lot of things that go unnoticed, you know, out in the community and that, and he's just a fine, yeah. fine bloke. He's a good man. So thank you, Maroon, and uh, we'll be sure to have you on the show again um, at a later date. Now, let's get into our first top four topic of the morning, State of Origin. We record on Wednesday mornings. Tonight is uh, State of Origin Game 1 up in Townsville. Eight Rabbitohs have been in camp in the two uh, State of Origin teams. 20% of the State of Origin teams have been uh, Rabbitohs. Just astounding and, and such a great rap on our club. It's uh, it's fantastic to see these guys getting these opportunities playing for South Sydney that didn't happen in the past. Um, so our first topic, top four players made for State of Origin that you've seen. We're going to go after that. Cracking start, hello. We're going straight back to you. Okay, Jez. I've, I've, um, yeah, state of origin to me. You know, the the two states. It's, it's created a lot of loyalty mm. for New South Welshmen and Queensland, and you know, it, it's war time mm. when when these two teams come together. So I think to be the players that we're talking about, you know, made for state of origin, you have to have that theatre about you, and you have to wear you know your heart on your sleeve. And I think, I mean, Wally Lewis. He's the one. I'm sure we've all got him written down there. Yep. He was made for it. I mean, when he came into it, he was just playing in the in the local first grade competition uh, in Brisbane. It wasn't uh, a week to week as you know tough and that is what it was down here playing. Is the ARL back then or whatever? It Would was. have been New South Wales. New South Wales rugby league. Yeah, sorry. So he, um, yeah, he came into the game and he ignited it because yeah. he got. The Queensland has been hot behind him, mm. and he he's he used to have gamesmanship. Yeah, you know there might have been a dive here and there from Wally, but he'd go up and talk to the ref. Well, and he had the a argument. referee that had played the game with him too in well, Barry Thomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fourteen Queenslanders on the yeah. field everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, speaking about speaking about Wally, and he had the nickname of the the King. You know, obviously dominated. Ours. Just wondered where you got your nickname of the Princess Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? Uh, very good. Uh, very good. Oh, he's had two weeks to think of He has. <laughs> I, I had Wally on my list as well. Yeah, and yeah. For me as a kid, like I was a kid when all of that um, was being played early on in Origin. And the thing that stands out for me is the only time I ever got to hear about this mythical Wally Lewis was when he played Origin or when he played for Australia. Because there was no Broncos, there was no Gold Coast, there was no Queensland teams in our competition. There weren't that many Queensland players in the New South Wales Rugby League competition. It was the Mal Meningas and the Gary Belchers and these guys at Canberra. But apart from that, there weren't too many down here. So the only time you got to see the Wallies and the Gene Miles and the um, the Greg Canescues and all these guys was when they played Origin. And it, that's what made it really special. I, when I think back to those 80s and stuff like that, that's what made it special for me. I, I think you're right. And it, it was a similar thing when England would come over. You hadn't yeah. seen these players. And the thing always, because you watch the local competition, the New South Wales rugby league, watch we all cheered on South, of course. And, you know, you saw, you, you didn't know these players, so you found it hard when we started getting beat. Who are these blokes that are yeah. better than, than our players? It was yeah. a real shock to me as a yeah. kid. But uh, shouldn't have been knowing LA these days. But anyway, go on, LA. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the other thing that he did bring out was, like, um, I was watching uh, NRL 360 last night and Ray Hadley was on talking mm. about how New South Wales are favourites at the start of every series and every game. And it... You know, they looked at the team again last night and they went through the back line, which is magnificent. The mm. back line is magnificent. Um, you know, it's a really good side. Mm. But what I don't know what it is, but Queensland seem to have that that little bit of passion. You know, mm. well, I mean, we have the passion and yeah. it's great. But they just, they're never beaten, are they? 
They're never beaten Queensland. You and, know what? I, I and reckon it's a chip on the shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always that thing where they feel downtrodden and they're the little brother and New South Wales have always looked down upon them and that's why they can always claim the underdog status. And it's just a chip on their shoulder that doesn't allow them to ever be beaten. Johnny Lang spoke to me about it when yeah. he was here, when he was coaching, and um, I think he hit the nail on the head. Mm. As a kid, he'd grown up watching the Queensland New South Wales clashes and it was always just the players playing the local league up at Queensland. Mm. But New South Wales, like John Lang played for New South Wales. Yeah. Right? Um, but he came down and got picked out of the out of the New South Wales Rugby League then. So he was a Queenslander playing in the New South Wales team. Yeah. So he said, as kids, we'd come back and we, we'd be getting beaten all the time. And, you know, we hated it. And now, we, you know, they saw it as a way of, well, we can stand up. And yeah, back who where we've come from. Yeah, and that and that's I think the passion they still have. And yeah, that's, that's uh, it's a great thing for the contest. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, of course it's called State of Origin, so it's where your origins from now. But back in the day, as you said, the Queenslanders come down playing in the New South Wales comp. They got picked for New South Wales, and so it was Queenslanders effectively beating the Queensland side mm. in mm. a lot of cases, and that built that resentment, and that's why they built so strong. But you know what? It's not too dissimilar to um, our passion when we play the Roosters. Yeah, you know a lot. We're, and all manly, you know, yeah. we've had a lot of our players poached mm. and playing for those clubs, being, being offered bigger money and coming back and beating us. And it's sort of why we built up that sort of resentment's probably too strong a word, but it's why we built up yeah. that passion that we've got every time we play the Roosters. Too strong. Yeah, maybe it's too weak a word. <laughs> yeah, <on. laughs> You're calling you princess now. <laughs> <Touché. laughs> anyway, sorry, hello, you other origin players? Yeah, um... Oh, the, the other one from New South Wales was Steve Mortimer. Oh, yes. He had, um, you know, you could see it meant so much to him. Mm. And, you know, I just can't, just off the top of my head, I think um, he might have won a series back from Queensland. And yep. I, I remember at the creek ground in a quagmire and there. He was being, 85. Yeah, being First chaired, clean yeah, sweep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being, you know, cheered off on the shoulders with the trophy mm. and, you know, actually tears, crying. Yeah. But, but what he did, he helped... Um, yeah, you know, he helped the New South Welshman realise he brought the passion to New South Wales at Wally, Wally and that had brought to Queensland. Mm, yep. and, and is that Artie, Wayne? Is that Wayne calling? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's heard us talking I about it. Turn that bloody thing off. <laughs> <laughs> That's Billy Moore, Queensland. Yeah. You keep talking, and I'll, I'll keep slide talking. Over yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you just block Shannon's the more you need to? But, <laughs> no, so he brought that passion, Steve Mortimer, and um, just going back to Steve Mortimer, uh, he he. My debut in Sydney in, in the New South Wales Rugby League was against Canterbury at uh, at Belmore. And, you know, I was only, I think I was 19 or 20. I can't remember how old I was, but I'd never heard a bloke talk so much on the field in my whole life. Yeah. And I thought, here's me on the opposition side as a young kid. Yeah, we were talking, as you know, but this bloke never shut up. He was mm. bagging us. He was bagging his own mates. He was talking about <laughs> plays and everything. But I just thought, well, you know, and that's, that he, tr- he you know, that transcended into his how he played for New South Wales. And the whole world knew that he was a New South Welshman. Mm. There was no, there was no question on who, you know, his passion or anything like that. And that was the same as Wally. And I think that that's what makes players, yeah, you know, the origin players that they are, the, the great origin players. Another one I go back to for New South Wales, Ben Elias. You know, yeah, yes. in that era, is in my era, just after Turvey. He probably played a little bit with Turvey to start. But, um, you know, you, you remember going back to the, the cut head and his mum on the yeah, side yes. of it <laughs> and her cuddling. So it wasn't just Benny. It was a whole family thing. that, it, And once it goes through the family, then it spreads to the fans and it spreads. And, the, you know, the players we're talking about here are the people that made Origin. Yes, yeah, very know, true. They are the people that made Origin. You're right. And that's why they were made for it. Because they had the theatre, yeah. they had the passion, and yes. above all, they had the ability to be yeah, able to carry right. it out, you know. And when they said something, they could follow it up. Yep. And, of course, you know, another one, not, my last one, Queenslander, the great Gordon Tallis. Yep. You know, he he just, you know, what you see with – what you. What you see with Gordy is exactly what you get. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, yeah, we were lucky to have him down here on our yep. staff and the Rabbitohs. He got behind it. Yeah. Fantastic bloke. Infectious personality. Yep. Um, and I think all of these guys we're talking about have that personality. Yep. yep. And they're never doubted by the people within their organisation. Yeah. Yep. They know they know where they're heading. They know where they want to take it. Yeah. And every one of them have people that will follow yeah. them. Yeah. That's why they're so good. 
Yeah, I had Gordy on my list too. Simply, one of the the key themes amongst the players I had, maybe not so much Wally, but the other blokes, which I'll go through later, was they're all stark raving mad. Yes, you know they all had those rolling poker machine eyes when they crossed crossed <laughs> yeah, the line yeah. on the field. You Remember know, that time just... he uh, Gordy dragged uh, Hodgson, Brett Hodgson. Yeah. He dragged him forty five metres. He would he would have thrown him forty five <laughs> rows back if he could. Well, have. he threw him over the fence, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and he, and he, the time he called Bill Harrigan a cheat and got yes. sent off in up in Queensland, and yeah. it was just uh, he. He uh, wasn't. You lying. talk about the theatre. <laughs> you talk about the th- the origin theatre. He was the origin theatre, and. Yeah, he, uh, he's got some stories, Gordy. Matty Johns always tells a joke that Gordy's got a lot of stories, but he doesn't understand how to build a story. He doesn't understand there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a, stories. Talking about Gordy getting sent off for calling Bill Harry going to cheat. Yep. That was when the microphones were out there. If they had microphones back in the other day, Tucker would have got life for what he said to Bill Harry. <laughs> Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, very good. Jeez, you mentioned the Theatre of Origin. He's not a player, but I just want to give him an honourable mention. He's the great Daryl Eastlake. Like, oh, yeah. You, know, you talk about the creating Origin and the yep. Theatre of Origin. With him being involved in those early broadcasts in the early 80s, yeah. that absolutely made Origin, I yep. reckon. He, yeah, everything was huge, and it yep. was just, you know, everything was just so over the top with yeah. Daryl, and he, and he really built, built up the hype of Origin and helped um, lay the foundation for what it is today. And yeah. you knew exactly who he supported. Too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the great man. Very good. Shannon, over to you. All right. I've uh, picked exclusively South players, Rabbitohs, uh, origin players, but I think all of them were quintessential origin players for, for different reasons. And my first one is, and you might find this a bit funny um, when I, when we speak about origin, but Craig Wing. And the reason why every origin side picks a player for their versatility. Yep. You know, someone who can come on and do a job at a hooker or half or 5'8 or fullback. Like, mm. there's not many players that can play fullback or can mm. play hooker. Yeah. You know, and everywhere just about in between. So I think Craig Wing was uh, a great... It was also, as well as being uh, versatile and very skillful, he was also tough, Craig. Like, because mm. he was good looking, I, I sort of get the same sort of treatment because I'm was good he? looking as well. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he... <laughs> I can. You he know, was a game changer, though, Shannon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but because he was good looking, um, you know, people doubted his toughness. That they shouldn't have. He was very oh. tough, very resilient, physical, really rugged, and and a heart, heart as big as far like Craig Wing, as well as being skillful. Yeah, and I say that not joking about a game changer. He could come on and turn a game oh, big yes. because of the, I think I remember might have been an Origin. I went to the a game up at. Suncorp, I'm sure he played, and he came on with about 20 minutes to go in, to go in the game. Joey and him just teamed up and just tore them apart straight up the middle. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, he he had that ability to turn it. He was a fit bloke too. Yeah, that's right. We might have to see we can get Wingy on the show one week. It'd be be great to talk to him about what it was like back in '99 and having that the difficult decision on what to do when it looked like we we're going to be kicked out, and then coming back later on and all that sort of stuff. I think it'd be great to have a chat to him about it. I'm sure he'd come on. Yeah, yeah he would, would absolutely. Yeah. He, see, he still loves the club, still does a lot for the club. But he and I just prove you can be good looking and tough as well. Right. So and, You've tried that joke and twice now. And <laughs> <laughs> where, I'm not giving where, up on it. Where's, <laughs> where's he going to fit that? <laughs> We'll have to zoom him in. Well, <laughs> you should listen to the opener of last week's show, Ella. <laughs> Shannon said, well, oh, yeah, obviously Mark Ellison's not here. We're 120 kilos lighter on the panel today. <laughs> and that was being kind. Well, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Jeez, it's been nice to be one of my <laughs> Uh, my next Origin player, as I said, they're all Rabbitohs. Uh, and when you think Origin, you think toughness. And when you think toughness, you think Les Davidson. Yeah. You know, he was built for Origin. He just hit like an axe. Origin's just full of that rugged defence and smashing blokes. Uh, and it's about intimidation, intimidating the other pack. And that was certainly Les. He was um, brutal in defence, but he was also run harder. He was brutal in attack and all knees and elbows. And uh, so Les is definitely uh, built for Origin. Uh, the third one is the other end of the continuum, it, although he's relatively tough, this guy, but more known for his um, freaky skill and natural ability uh, and very passionate origin player is Julian O'Neill. Oh, yeah. Jules was a freak, an absolute freak athlete, just natural ability and 
the more pressure there was in games, the better he played. He was one of those guys who just thrived on pressure. He'd have a couple of durries at half time, calm his nerves, and go out and slay you again in the second half. He was a absolutely amazing player. I feel uh, honoured and blessed to have played with Jules and and to to know him as a mate. And yeah, he's got a young bloke who's coming through. Uh, the junior system doing really well as well. Um, but Julian O'Neill, definitely your quintessential origin player. And the last one, I think every Rabbitohs fan knows this one as a current origin player, a current Rabbitoh, and always plays his best around origin time, and that's Dane Gagai. Yeah. Always, always grows an extra foot taller. Um, he just always lifts. He's, he's fast. He's agile. He can, you know, he can turn a half opportunity in a try in in no time at all and um, you need blokes like that because it's a, they're tight games origins and they give very few chances so when you get them you need to capitalise and that's what Dane's really good at so uh, he's a fantastic origin player and all of my origin players who are Craig Ring, Les Davidson, Julian O'Neill and Dane Gagai are all proud Rabbitohs. Yeah, very good. Well, I've got another one on your Rabbitohs theme and unfortunately he never had the opportunity to play origin but a bloke that was absolutely made to play it was Sam Burgess. Yes. Yeah. Oh, t- <laughs> wouldn't it have been great to have seen Sammy? I thought I thought England was just North Queensland. Yeah. <laughs> According to the song, yeah. where is oh. Dewsbury? That's in Queensland. <laughs> well, the weather's the same, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have just been magical to see Sammy play. He would have been similar to Gordy. Yes. I reckon when he got out there, and he wouldn't have needed that passion for either state. He just loved to play footy yes. and, and cause all sorts of havoc. So I, he's one that I would have added to my list. So just quickly finishing off my list, I talked about Stark raving mad, and you went all Rabbitohs, and all of my blokes wanted to be Rabbitohs. So <laughs> the first one was Wally Lewis. My second one rolling off the back of Wally was Mark Geyer. Now, he didn't get many opportunities to play Origin, but... Those images of him face to face with Wally, with the referee David Manson between them, trying to separate them, they're the enduring images for me as a kid watching Origin and seeing that passion spill over. And yes, yeah, I reckon MG was made uh, for Origin, even though he didn't get too many shots at at playing it. Um, I also had Gordy, and my last one, and he didn't get a lot of shots at playing it either. I only played the two Origins, but it was Mario Fennick. Muzz was just, he was all passion, wasn't he, Ella? You had the yeah. opportunity to play with him, and he was he was all passion. He had the nickname Test Match, I think, because of the way he trained. It was like playing a Test Match every week. And I just think back, you mentioned Benny Elias before, but wouldn't it have been good if Benny was born in Brisbane? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he just saw Benny and Mario going at each other yeah. for 10 years <laughs> in origin yeah. as well as for Balmain and South. It would have, that would have oh. been magical, I reckon. <laughs> would have been magical. So, uh, yeah, my four were Wally Lewis, Mark Geyer, Gordon Tallis, and, and Mario Fennick. And who knows who's going to stand up tonight? Indeed. There's a few new new faces in uh, in both teams. And we saw the great Rabbitoh Jai Arrow last year before he was a Rabbitoh, giving it to the rooster on the ground when he was in La La <laughs> Land. And South fans loved him even more for it before he got here. Yeah. <laughs> well, he knew it was coming here at the yeah. time, too. <laughs> Well, you know, just saying tonight, you don't know who's going to stand up tonight. That's always some freakish act of play. But that's one of the great, it is the great thing of sport. A family friend of mine was asking me, you know, about my passion for, for rugby league and the Rabbitohs. And she said, I just, you know, try and understand what it is. And I said, well, she loves the arts. And I said, it's just like theatre. Mm. It has all the drama of theatre, but it's unscripted. That's it. You don't know what's going to happen. It has yep. triumph, tragedy. And I, that's the great thing. And no more is that more evident than yeah. in, in origin. Yeah. yeah. I was hey. talking to uh, my daughter this morning. She's she's five. And she was in a real quandary this morning about which team she wanted to win because I told her that there were going to be three Rabbitohs playing in the blue team and three Rabbitohs playing in the... Maroon team, and so she'd been thinking about. It. She's, I don't know who I want to win, Dad. And then she said, "Is Latrell playing?" And I said, "Yeah, he plays for the blue team." She says, "I think I want the blue team." Oh, thank, goodness. <laughs> thank goodness, Jess. I thought I was going to have to report you to Family and Community <laughs> Services for <laughs> but child abuse. Then. <laughs> oh, oh, that's no, really good. Origin is just for players that handle the big moments. Yeah, it is. Isn't that's it? what it is. And there's there's so many big moments in in the game and. Yeah, it's just every one you every game you watch, even even the past where it's a dead rubber. 
yep. you're still there watching yeah. it, and you know there's still it's, the standards just incredible. Yeah. Can't wait for tonight. Bring it on. Bring got, it on. I've got to say, I wasn't too pumped for it before about 20 minutes ago. Now I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm glad we'd be talking about it. Right, eight, we'll be back after this break. Now, we talk about it every week, the official Rabbitohs merchandise store, but it is relocated. It's now up here at uh, level four of the juniors at Kingsford on Anzac Parade. So make sure you head up to the Rabbitohs offices. You just come into the juniors at Kingsford, go straight up the lift to level four, and it's right there as you walk into the offices right in the, the front entrance there. Make sure you can check out all of the gear, whether you're looking for a jersey or a polo shirt, a flag, a hat, anything you like, they have got it in there. And if you can't make it into into the juniors at Kingsford, jump online at shop.rabbitohs.com. Dot au and Shannon, we go to you every week about the the new gear in the store and the the shop's looking great out the front there. Looks fantastic, and you can come up here get your merchandise level four. Uh, also, if you've got any queries around your membership, you can come up here and get it sorted. Uh, ticketing as well, so it's a one stop shop for all Rabbitohs fans, yep. and particularly our members. And uh, an exclusive straight off the press, Jez, uh, on Monday we'll have our Storm Techs in and oh, ready for sale. The big Storm Tech the, jackets. The Storm Techs, they're always very popular, particularly this time of year with the oh. with the cold and uh, a very very special edition. Uh, Storm Tech this year. Uh, Are you modelling them? That's for a, <laughs> no, I'm modelling the tent covers. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the Rabbitohs tent covers. But no, um, no. the Storm Techs this year, uh, personally designed by Russell, uh, a global edition Storm Tech, shall I say. It'll make sense once people see them. So uh, have a look online uh, and you'll be able to pick them up in store from Monday the 13th of June. Fantastic. You mentioned being able to come up and buy your merch or sort your membership. Are you also available as a former international captain to go and sign some autographs or... Yeah, I've got a bit of work to do, but I can, I'm sure I can free up a bit of time here or there as a, as I do when I walk the streets. So Signing day. pizza boxes or <laughs> pasta bowls. They are great. I mean... Uh, what, yeah, pizza boxes? No, no, no. <laughs> pasta bowls? <laughs> they're good Talking too. Storm Tech. Storm oh, yeah, Tech storm jackets. Tech uh, yeah, they are. No, they're... they're they, the fashion of them is really good too, but they keep you warm. That's the biggest thing about them. They do. They're really, really warm. Um, and dry. Yeah, and, and they last really, really well too. They're, they're fantastic additions. We've got a very limited they number. They stretch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is forced to, Ella. <laughs> he looks like a burst sausage in there, Ella. <laughs> But uh, seriously, uh, they're great. We've got a limited edition this year. You want to look like the players, get in early from 13th of June for your Storm Techs. Very good. So uh, make sure you jump up to level four of the juniors at Kingsford on Anzac Parade or jump online at shop.rabbitos.com.au. Now, this Saturday night, we take on the Newcastle Knights out at Stadium Australia, and it is our junior appreciation round. There's going to be a 1,000 kids, more than a 1,000 kids, doing a march past around the ground on the field where their heroes are about to play. What a buzz it'll be for those guys, and it's one of the benefits of playing junior rugby league in, in our district. So we thought our next top four topic would be the top four juniors that you saw coming through the ranks, and uh, we might start with you on, on this one, Shannon. Okay, well, the four juniors I've picked are playing the same junior league side. Right. So think about how strong this junior league side, because three of them out of the same junior league team playing for Zetlin, um, coached by the great Tony Kilikilso, who, nice trivia point, was the first grade coach's uh, brother-in-law, um, right. Frank Curry's brother-in-law at the at the time. Well, they're still brother-in-laws. Um, Kilo, good, good bloke. I played with his sons, uh, Daniel and Matt Curl. So he coached this side that had... These three guys, three of these four guys, played New South Wales and for Australia, and they played in the same junior league side. What wow. a strong side it was! So uh, the first person in that side, um, we're also a great Origin player, but certainly great junior, uh, tough player, is Terry Hill. Yep, Terry Hill, fantastic player. I know you're a huge fan, Jez, of Terry yep. Hill as a as a player and a person. And um, Terry was a you know strong, robust. Uh, center, a competitor, 
um, in everything that he did. He was intimidating. There's not too many centers you say intimidating, but that that Terry Hills in that that Zetland side, uh, fantastic team. Another one is a guy I've mentioned before. Uh, lived a couple of houses down from me in Wollamaloo. Is Jim Dimming. You know, um, you talk about transfer. Are you going to say Jim Morgan? I know. Well, Jim lived on the other side. Oh, actually, geez, he had a long career in the juniors. If he played with Terry Hill, <laughs> no, Jim lived on the other side. Actually, I was fortunate. I was surrounded by Rabbitohs royalty. I guess uh, Jim. Jim is a Maitland junior. He's not from um, Sydney, but came came through the grades, the senior grades here at Rabbitohs, of course. But no, Jim Dimmick was in that same Zetland side, and he revolutionised Locke. You know, he he was that sort of ball playing Locke rather than just hit the ball up. Um, a very skillful player, as well as big and robust because of his you know Tongan and Polynesian heritage. But Jimmy could play lock. He could play five eight second row, and he did play all of those positions regularly and sometimes um, hooker. And Jimmy went on to play for New South Wales and Australia as well. So um, the third one in this side, and this might be a bit of bias, but he's my brother, Nathan Donato. He he actually got picked in the New South Wales school boy, um, Catholic Colleges team out of St Mary's Cathedral with, with with Jimmy. He broke his ankle and he was never the same player after it. He, he had That was cruel of you to I, do that. I, yeah. <laughs> I, tri- I tripped over on my way to dinner one night <laughs> with my brother and that was the end of his career, unfortunately. <laughs> now he says when I walk over him, when he comes over and we're watching the footy and I walk in front of the TV, he misses the whole second half. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Nathan, you know, he, my brother was very agile. Uh, he was a halfback and he was... Um, very skillful. He was clever and strategic the way he played. He could goal kick even at 13 and 14 in the junior league for that Zetland side. He'd regularly get them from both sidelines. He was a very, very good goal kicker. So basically, he was everything I wasn't. Uh, skillful. <laughs> uh, now we one. know, Ella. It wasn't the broken ankle that ruined his career. It was the service from his dummy half. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was everything I wasn't. He was a nice bloke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he is. And he'll be chuffed about getting this mentioned in the podcast just quietly too. <laughs> so Nathan, you owe me a carton of beer. Uh, yeah. I thought you must owe him a bit of cash. Right? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. To be honest. <laughs> but Nathan was in that same Zetland side. It was a very, very strong side. And then uh, the fourth one, I've mentioned him because he's one of my favourite. is Jim Sedaris. Mm. He was in that same side. He went from playing this Zetland side Started the year in the Zetland team, finished in first grade in the same same year, and he wow. got he got rookie. I think he got rookie of the year. Did he get? Rookie yeah, he did. Of the year? He did yeah. the Dell M rookie he, of the year. He got rookie of the year. Like he's George gone. George was coach of the year that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know Tony Kelso. Like yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He was coaching all of these kids, so he must have been some kind of coach because they've all gone on and, and um, you know played first grade New South Wales and Australia. I don't. And this is how strong South Juniors is. So there's three. Three of those guys are internationals, origins players. I don't even know if they won the comp. Yeah, right. It was a really close. You know, the Rovers had blokes like uh, Daryl mm. Trindle. I think um, Peter Trevor might have played in that side. Who went on and played first yeah. grade. It was just such a it's such a strong junior league. But so anyway, to surmise, my four juniors are Terry Hill, Jim Dimmick, Nathan Donato, and Jim Starris. Very good, very good. I like it. Over yeah. to you, Ella. I just had a look at, across the years of the Rabbitohs. I mean, I was on the back end of, you know, the 70s. I didn't see them come through as juniors, but I couldn't go past talking about Ron Kurt and Bob McCarthy. Yeah. Um, you know, Ronnie came up playing for Kensington and lived around the area, um, came on and came through the junior systems, the SG Balls President's mm. Cup, as it was back those days. Went on, well, I think, four premierships mm. for, for the Rabbitohs. Yeah, he did. And Bobby was the same. They came came through virtually mm. together. Bobby played for Chelsea. I know mm. that. I've spoken to Bobby about that. Played I'm, soccer as well. What a freak, did he? Well, he must have <laughs> if he played for Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I missed that one, Jess. I, I told you, Jess. Where's my, hang on, hang on. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Speak slowly for Mark, please, Jeremy. <laughs> Oh, you just threw me there. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I never see, I've never seen him kick a ball, Bob. <laughs> how's, how's he going to play soccer? Uh, <laughs> he might have kicked a few heads in his time. Yes. I'm sure he No, did. but they, they were just, you know, 
you, you you go to the juniors today and you see their photos up on the wall. There, there's a couple of others there. There's Eric Sims and, and uh, Ray Branning and that in the photos. Together. That's a great photo. Paul, and one, Paul yeah. Sait. Yes. Uh, you know, you you got to mention those guys when you talk about great juniors. Yeah. Because that, that was that was one of the areas, areas that I saw the, the sort of back end of that mm. I really knew what was going on. But that was the era that set up mm. South Sydney's Prominence, I think, as winning that many premiers and showed how strong our juniors were. Yeah, five grand finals in a row between yeah. 67 and 71, yeah. one, one four of them. And you yeah. sp- speak about people having dies. Well, the only reason we didn't win the 69, the only reason we didn't win the five in a row is because the Tigers just yeah. took dies all game. Yeah, so that's right. Just goes to show what a, what a blight it is. LA, can I ask, um, did Bobby and Ron Coote captain Australia? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I know Ron did. Did Bob? Yes, t- Bobby yeah. did too as yeah, well. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Two yeah. Australian captains coming yeah. out of the same junior league. Yeah, yeah. At the at, at the same time. era. Yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. An f- amazing result. Yeah. yeah, I just I just had to bring that up because I, I mean I I, ha- I didn't see them come through as juniors, but you know you, you know their passion for the play. Yep. So they both left to go to other clubs at the end of their career for different reasons. Yep. Uh, but you know they still have. I know they have a massive passion for for the Rabbitohs. You yeah, know, and they've they've been great stalwarts for CRC. It's great when we see them come down for a oh, captain yeah. run or something like that. It, you can see the boys too if they spot them. The intensity goes up a yeah. little bit, and every one of our players will go over and say hello to them at the end of the training session. That's just how much they are revered at this club. And oh, I remember never forget. Well, Ron Ron gave me my. Back back in the day in in eighty four, we we used to have a a day called International Day, and that was where all the past internationals of the Rabbis. We had plenty of them then, you know. And uh, you'd have it was like a sponsors day, and there'd be one at each table with a player, and then they bring the the first grade team up, and you get presented your jersey. And Ron gave me my jersey, and obviously I'll never forget that, you know. And um, but you know, coming from one junior and a bike, I, yeah, I'd have loved to reach half the heights that, that Ron did as a player. But yeah. you know, just he's a great man, and uh, he's been a fantastic ambassador, as a, as as Bobby for, yeah. for rugby league. Um, now I moved forward on then to coming through and playing with a bloke who, um, you know, was a remarkable junior, and I, I played with him uh, for mascot. Uh, Ian Roberts. Yes, um, he was he was the most prolific trainer I've ever seen in my time, mm. and just uh, hard, no nonsense yeah. player. Uh, didn't carry on with any rubbish outside, and just just play the game hard. Mm. And people respect him, and you know people didn't want to run at him, and they didn't want to tackle him. No, uh, and that that was there was one bloke that did respect him once, did disrespect yeah, him once, yeah. and he ended up losing oh, his Jimmy. front teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Jack. <laughs> and then the story goes that Jimmy's so tight he went looking for his teeth and put them in his sock. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and, and, you know, go, go back to 89, Ian Roberts was an integral part of our team and he played the first half of our major semi after having a groin needled up with, the, with a mm. groin injury. I think had he been fit that year, it would have been a lot harder to, to beat. He was a, is a massive part yeah. of our team. Yeah. Um, then I'll move on. The next one is, is, you know, I had a little bit to do with Sato coaching, John Sutton. Mm. I mean, he, he didn't re- he reach the international or the New South Wales heights, but, um, you know, that didn't seem to worry him in his career. Mm. He just he just wanted to play for CS. He did. He wanted to play for CS. Um, you know, and, and we, we talk about the Ronnie Coots, Bob McCarthy's, and Ian Roberts, and, you know, the next person I talk about, you know, they've reached greater heights in representative football, but... The passion that John has showed for this club uh, since he came through as a junior and staying here, I've been, you know, involved in, you know, quite a few of the negotiations, particularly near the end of his career when he took a lot less money, was prepared to go year by year at the yep. end of his career because he didn't want to go anywhere else. Yep. You know, and it's even now, like he's, um, he, he loves his coaching. He was assistant coach to the SG ball team this year. He's always at the NRL training, helping out with the coaching there. Mm. Um, and he's evolving in that area now. Yeah. And for him to do that, because, you know, if you don't know Sato, Sato's a very quiet, shy guy. He is. You know, and he's he's really evolving. Even the playmakers, you know, we, we do that section yeah. each week. And he's he's really 
He's really come of age there, too. He's gaining confidence. He tells it? me he enjoys it now. Oh, we, he we, used to run a mile when he saw me coming. Yeah, when, yeah, when, yeah. When yeah, we yeah. Had like t- the girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we had TV cameras at training, no, Jeremy. No, he's the only person in the world apart from my mother that calls me Jeremy. No, well, Jeremy. No, Jeremy. What, what we do, we how we come up with the ideas for that, normally Sonny will send a text out to Sato and I the, yeah. you know, the day before or a couple of days before. And I used to always just reply and say, we'll do this, do that. And oh, probably a couple of ep- you know, episodes in this year, I said, Sato, what are you... And Sato's taken over that part of it yeah. too. So, he, you know, he thinks about it. And it's No, it's been really good. But just his passion and his ability, he's, you know, out of all the players I've coached and played with, his knowledge of the game yeah. is second to none. He, he's, he knows football as well. Bet, sorry, better than anyone yeah. I've ever played with. I mean, I'm not saying coach that, but anyone I've ever played with or coached. Yeah, he's uh, he's our blue shirt on game day yeah. as well. And I, every now and then, I just wish Cody had skip across field to the left <laughs> and just turn the ball back inside <laughs> to suck, just to see the magician <laughs> again. Oh, he loves it. He loves it on the. But you know, yeah, to his credit, he's he's good. He just gets out there, you know. We don't have a lot of messages that are sent out from above. And, and you know, with Wayne as well, Wayne knows how, how much Sato knows the game. Sometimes Wayne will say, just send Sato out in. He knows what's going on. Yeah. Have a chat with him. Keep him focused. Yep. You know, and that's... What a great rap from a man of his status, yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's true. What, yeah, Sato, he's gone out, said something, Wayne said, something, well, mate, he's, got the, he's getting the messages right. You know, get another message to him. Yeah. So and that, that doesn't happen very often because that's not how Wayne coaches. Yeah. You know? The coaching's all done during the week with JD and Benny Hornby and that. Yep. Yes. So, um, you know, there's just a few little tweaks now and again that, that Sato can bring and um, that just comes from his vast knowledge and also his love of the place. Yeah. You know, it just there's no having to force him to do anything. He's just, he's just here because he's a competitor and he wants to win for the Rabbitohs. And that's, that's been... Uh, the the shining light of him in his career mm. and his passion for the place. So, um, you know, and the last one for me, I know I've mentioned a few more at the start. <laughs> that's okay. We had to go through the year as I thought that f- of my involvement. That's how I, I thought about it. Um, I watched this kid play since he was four and a half. I know uh, who you're going to yeah, say. He played. He played. Um, <laughs> he played with my son Josh, and he was. Josh, I think, was five and a half or six. It was the under sixes at the time, a, a mascot. It was Ken Murray. Yeah. He, he used to come off the bench, and he was just, I think I've spoken about He was the smiling assassin in the team. Every, you'd say hello to him, he'd just smile at you. You know, everything, you know, he didn't say much, but he, he'd just smile at you. He'd go on and play as a four and a half year old. It's the best tackling technique I've ever seen of a kid that age, mm. you know, and, and you watch him today. For his size and his stature, like his his defensive prowess is amazing. Yeah. Um. And what else he brings for the game too? With his quick play, of the ball, his ability to pass. Uh, you know, his his feet before the line, his passion for the rabbit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. His leadership. Um. And watching him come through the juniors, even coming through the mats and SG ball. He was the he was the king of the SG ball. Yeah, everyone yeah. knew Cameron Murray played for Seas. Um, everyone knew that watched knew any under eighteen player in Australia. He was the king. Yep. And uh, you know, I'm just so grateful he's still here. We've extended him. You know, he'll be. A, I'm sure he'll be a future captain of the club. Yep. Uh, but he just he just stands for and delivers everything South Sydney's about. In my in my opinion. Yep. And uh, you know, I, you know, sometimes. Yeah, you, know, you don't want to embarrass players saying that, but he just it is, it's true. And he um his preparation for a game, uh, and training and the way he lives his life is just all about South Sydney. Mm. Yep. Two yeah. great yeah. two Sato I feel like getting on my feet getting a standing ovation. They're like, I'm pumped. Yeah, I'm pumped. I, I, I agree. Um, Sato's my all-time favourite South Junior and all-time favourite South player. But Cameron Murray's a very close, very close second. Um, two fantastic ambassadors for our club. And we've got a long way to go yet. Yeah. With Cameron, you know, like I think he's 23 or 24. Yeah. You know, yeah. For, I, I forget how old. They are. Well, he captain because he's been here so long. Captain the New South Wales twenties at eighteen years of age under Brad Fittler, who's now his state of origin coach. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, 
Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we'll quickly go through my ones. I mentioned John Sutton as well. I think he won 10 comps in a row with Kensington. Yeah, he did. Well, Phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> 10 yeah. in a row. In a strong junior league. Yeah. And so that mural at Kensington Oval really says it all for well, I'll for tell Sutter. you what says it all about the mural at Kensington Oval. Mm. It never gets defaced. Never. No. Never gets defaced. Does it have anything to do with Sutto being part of the Bra Boys? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It just shows the the respect that people have for Sutto. And, you know, it's similar to Redfern Oval. Yes. Like, there's a lot of white cement at Redfern Oval and there's yep. very little graffiti over the years. It's yep. It's been going now for, what, nearly 15 years since it's been redeveloped and it's been really looked after. And I think that shows the respect that the community has for not only the Rabbitohs but also for what Redfern Oval means. Um, in itself, as as hallowed turf there in the in the middle of Redfern. It was a great tribute to John too, like from 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 us and from the council yeah. and, the, and the community. As yeah. Well. It was yeah, magnificent. There was a great photo, might have been last week or the week before, and it was um, of the southeastern seagulls. I think it was the under sixes, maybe, all standing in front of Sutto's mural. Oh, lovely! With John at one end because his son Ace yep. is in the team. And Dane Gagai at the other end because his son Dante's in the team. And it was such a great photo. I thought those kids, yes. they must be looking at that wall and going, why is Ace's dad yeah. on the wall? And then having their mum and dad be able to explain it to them. Yep. And then, oh, there's Dante's dad. Oh, yeah, he's playing in the game next Wednesday night for Queensland. You know, it must be mm. such a buzz buzz for those yeah. kids. <laughs> yeah, I saw Amazing. that photo. was great. Yeah, very good. My next one on my list was Craig Wing. He was an absolute excitement machine when he was coming through. Everyone used to talk about Wingy, and when he made his debut in those late 90s and he stepped around Peach and stepped around ET and half the Sharks team to score that famous try, it it really set him up. Um, For what was hoping to be a long career at the Rabbitohs, similar to John Sutton and what we hope with Cameron Murray, Um, and it was just unfortunate timing that the expulsion of the club happened when it did and he had to move away and he spent probably the bulk of his best years of his career at, at another club but um, he was one of the the kings of the juniors too as you talk about um, Cameron Murray he was one of the ones that everyone talked about another one that I've got on the list which is probably a lot of people wouldn't have thought of but Bo Champion I thought he was an absolute champion <laughs> sorry for the fun as he was as he was um coming through and I, I always joke with him that he'd always be at first grade training when he was a, a young bloke and I thought who's this skinny kid looking for autographs and next thing he'd throw on a training jersey and run out with them and like who's this kid and Champo would be doing those hard inside line runs and all that sort of stuff when he was only a teenager training with the first grade team and it's only that his body didn't hold up for him that he didn't have a a longer career, but in junior football, he he was very very good. And I remember there was one game, he was playing in our um, in our flag team, and he was also I think the captain of Endeavour Sports High, who were playing in the yeah. Commonwealth Bank Cup or whatever it was called at the time, GIO Cup, whatever it was. And there was one game we played a semi final against Penrith at Penrith Park. I remember it and very he, well. He, I was coaching that day, and he he played that game, and then. Ran off the field, played five eighth for us. Ran off the field, and five minutes later, ran back on the field for Endeavour, yeah. playing fullback. Are you kidding? Played two wow. full games yeah, yeah. and wow. start in both games. What, what what grade was he playing for us? Flag, flag. Okay, wow, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. He was under twenties, I think. Then. Or yeah, I think it was yeah twenties yeah, or twenty ones, maybe yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. But he was obviously still at school. Yeah. Um, and played for Endeavour, str- like literally straight after. He must have run in, changed his shirt, short and socks, and run back out another, and played another full game. Another thing you'd have to you know, give a great rap to Champo for that not many people know, that, mm. that when Greg Inglis came to the club, oh, yeah. we uh, we had to lose a player to fit him in under the cap. Mm. And, uh, and Richo went to him and spoke to him about it. And it's a hard thing being a South junior, but you need... In that position, you need, you need a saleable item, as you know we often call it. Yeah. And and Bo put his hand up, went to Melbourne. Yep. Um, didn't want to leave. No. Didn't want to leave, but went down. I mean, um, you know, he he he, he would have still been at South, but obviously he understood for South. Greg Inglis coming there was a massive thing, and a yeah, you know, a big big 
clap of the hands for Bo on that. You know, oh, yeah. he, you know, not many people know that, but that's exactly what happened. I, I was sitting in Richo's office that night as he was going through all the negotiations, and he was on the phone to David Gallup saying, Greg Inglis is going to go to Essendon, mate. He's going to go to Essendon if you don't sort this out. He's trying to ring... Um, Ian Schubert, who was a salary cap order at the time, but he was too busy having Christmas beers at some pub on the south coast. So we had to go to David Gallup to try and get this stuff sorted out. And I remember that phone call to Champo. And we all know Richo was an emotional bloke at the best of times, but both he and Champo were in tears on the phone. And Richo just saying, thank you, Bo. Thank you so much. You don't understand the sacrifice that you're making for this club. You're going to deliver us Premiership 21. He said, and I promise I'll get you back one day. You're not finished with this club. And true to his word, Richo got him back a few years later. And uh, it was great to have him come back. I remember making the call to Champo. Because he'd been away for about three years, maybe more. He went to Melbourne. He'd been at the Gold Titan. Coast. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember Richo coming in and telling me we re-signed Bo Champ and give him a ring for some quotes. And I've I've still had Champo's number in my phone and I've, I've rung him thinking, I wonder if he's changed his number. And I've rung the number. And instead of saying hello, he's gone, I've still got Jeremy Monaghan in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes, he's home. Yeah. He's coming home. What a champ. He's a, a champion yeah. by name, champion yeah, by nature. Is. There's, a, there's a few things that typify a champ there. One, he's putting the club before himself. Yeah. He's actually a very passionate South Sydney man, very passionate community man too. Um, in my previous role as general manager of South Cares, yep. he when he was playing here, he was never said no to anything community yep. might. And even since then, and since he uh, stopped working for the club, although he's done some work for South Cares, anything community orientated, he's always the first to put his hand yep. up. I remember the council contacted me about a volunteer. It was Volunteers Day, National Volunteers Day, and they're having this big function um, for their volunteers in the Ramwick. Um, LGA and Champo got up and just gave a fantastic speech about uh, the importance of volunteers and, and the role they played in his life. Um, they had a tough period when he was a young bloke and the Smith family helped them and he's he's never forgot um, where he's come from. Yeah. He's thankful for everything that the Rabbitohs have given him and the community have given him and he's always willing to give back. Uh, he's, a, he's a real character champs. Yeah. I, I, I really, really like him. He's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's a great guy. Yeah, great fella. So I couldn't leave him off my, my list. And now similar to you, Elo, the last one on my list, I didn't see them coming through the ranks but left an indelible mark on me as a young South Sydney fan and absolute legend of the mascot club and it's Mark Ellison. Oh, <laughs> Thanks, Jen. My favourite player as a kid. Broke Do you want me to talk a bit left. about myself? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mavo. <laughs> I was listening to the uh, to the boys on Rabbitohs Radio last night. Geez, they gave Mavo some stick. They were doing their <laughs> they were doing their remembering a Rabbitohs segment on Blake Butcher, and somehow Mavo turned it into talking about himself. <laughs> and, and Brownie Brownie says, "Is this remembering a Rabbitoh with Steve Mavin?" Or? <laughs> Very funny, but uh, yeah, hello, you're a proud South Sydney junior, and a lot of people speak very highly of you coming through and played Australian schoolboys and. With uh, Jason Amos, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a story for another day. <laughs> we won't be getting him in here, that's for sure. <laughs> I've got a couple of special mentions. I've broken the top four barrier. I don't want to put pressure on this bloke, but he looks like he's going to be something special. And you mentioned the young guys that we announced last week and Davey Mawali. I think he's going to be something special. And I think back over the years that we probably haven't had a great record in producing big front rowers at this club. They're, we've had guys like the Eddie Pettiborns and these sorts of guys that have been very good forwards for our club and had good first-grade careers here and all around the world. But Davey Mawali looks like being one of those monster front rowers that's going to do something special over the years, I think. And you don't want to put any pressure on him. He's playing Jersey Fleg at the moment and doing a great job of it. Played SG Ball, so he's playing up a couple of years at the moment. He's handling it very well. And I just think he's going to be a, a special kid. And um, it shows that it's important for our members and fans to get out to these games early on, on Saturday to watch these kids play. The the first game of the afternoon is the, the New South Wales Cup with guys like Peter Mamazellis and Blake Taff named in that team, Lachlan Ilias named in that team. This is your chance to come and see these guys before they do inevitably get their chance to play. That'll be followed by the Flegg team, which have been playing some very good football over recent weeks. Had a narrow loss last week, but they've been playing some great footy before that, so it's a good chance to come out and see that next generation of player and it's good to see Yellow nailing these young blokes down and yeah, <laughs> keeping yeah, no, them at the club. He's a good player. There's another, another player there that's 
was making his name's big uh, the special K, I call him Keon. Oh yeah, he came through with Cameron Murray. Yeah, he came through the mascot club and came through the juniors, and he's he's really becoming a, a very very accomplished NRL player. At he the moment. is. So he's going well. What a great experience for him over the last week and a half, being part of that Origin camp. Yeah, I mean. He's he's been fortunate at the timing of it with a you know, a few of the other back rowers unavailable and things mm. like that. That doesn't matter. I mean that's good for him to get it in there Big and time. get and get that exposure to yep. you know, the other players and see what, see it what takes they do to at, play at yeah, that level. See what they do at that level. Yeah. You know? So um yeah, he's a great he's a great kid, yeah. Julian, and he's uh he's been a good junior that's come through as well. Mm. I can I just you know what I'm like, I sometimes I overthink about it. Yep. there's one we've forgotten, not just on the football field. But it's the great George Piggins. Yeah. I mean, what he did coming through, you know, by, by for, you know, mascot and that coming through and then playing for South Sydney in Australia and then what he's done after. We talk about passion for South Sydney. Uh, what he's done after there, with we, we know what he's done. Um, yep. He he is one of the great juniors. Absolutely. In this club too. Absolutely. Yeah, it's not just about what you do on the field. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's done so much for this club off the field and a big part of the reason why... We're still here, so That's absolutely um, icon of the club. Yeah, I've got one last special mention: the international captain, the Italian himself, Shannon Donato. Oh, thank you, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were never going to give me a mention. No. <laughs> I'll start. I'll start in the sweat. You talked about uh, international captains from South Sydney and McCarthy and Coote. How can we forget your stellar career with Italy? It was bellissimo. <laughs> <laughs> two two great tests over there. Uh, uh, we're still to determine whether they were tests. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> most, most teams had oranges at half time. They had pasta. It's <laughs> the only reason I played. <laughs> they had stuffed crust pieces. Yeah. Pizzas. I'm, very, I'm a very proud South Junior Jez. Played Harold Matz, SG Ball, uh, Jersey Flag. Played every grade for the club and, and very proud to have done so. Very good. Very good. That was a good uh, walk down memory lane. Now, the Rabbitohs are back again at Stadium Australia this weekend, which means there are corporate hospitality functions and game day experiences available. So whether you're there with a group of mates or you want to entertain some clients, there's options galore for you to take a look at. So jump on the phones um, and speak with James or Maddie in our corporate hospitality team or jump online at corporate.rabbitohs.com.au to have a look at all of the options there. And uh, are there many options for this weekend's game, Shannon? I know that the last game against Parramatta, we were absolutely chockers in the corporate areas. Yeah, we're bursting at the seams. Yeah. All of the suites, all of the open-air corporate boxes just about. Uh, the two corporate lounges were at capacity. Mm. And this game's not quite at capacity, but it's really well uh, attended and frequented. Uh, we always have uh, some of the injured players come up and say hello and do a bit of Q&A. And we've got a couple of club legends um, doing the rounds in the in the corporate areas, mingling uh, this week, we've got the great Ziggy Niscott. Uh, Ziggy. Big new. Yes. Yes. Good. Ziggy's coming and Lester Q Biles. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, uh, Les. So uh, they're going to be mixing with our with our corporate family and our partners. So they're the kind of experiences you get to enjoy at, um, at Stadium Australia for our home games there. Their hospitality, the service itself is great, but just some really fun opportunities. And I, I know there's some groups doing some dressing room um, tours pregame as well. Wow, very good. Well, I, I, as I said before, I was listening to Rabbitohs Radio and the uh, one of the club's historians, Brad Ryder, was a special guest on the show and he was talking about uh, the corporate hospitality functions at the games that he likes to attend with uh, his mate Michael Curran and he's uh, signed up another mate of his norm now is going into the rooms and he said that you even offer the experience of a lift out and a lift back to the games. That's going above and beyond the call of duties for, but that's the kind of uh, that's that's the kind of guy I am. Actually, I had the pleasure of uh, Norm and uh, Brad's company uh, at the last game, and Brad is a club historian. He's always got some uh, interesting stories, and and so does Norm, and so do I. Uh, Sometimes some of my stories are true. Sometimes, (laughs) and Brad's story is more interesting on the way out or the way back. There's no stories on the way back. I'll give you a tip. <laughs> Snoring? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Very good. But he's very good company. Very good. <laughs> very good. Jump on corporate.rabbitos.com.au to check out all of those and to book your Shannon Donato Uber. <laughs> Now, 
Now, a trivia question last week in uh, in honour of Anthony Maroon being in here. We spoke about his cousin Darren Maroon playing for the Rabbitohs and we wondered how many first grade games that he had played for the Rabbitohs. We didn't worry about the other clubs, just the Rabbitohs, because he had three stints with us. He was with us between 86 and 92 then 94, and then 97. So over those uh, few years, how many games do you reckon Darren Maroon will have uh, will have played with South Sydney in first grade? I'll have a educated guess and say 94. 94. Don't say 94, Ella. I'll say, 80, <laughs> I'll say 83. 83. It was 58. Oh, is that all? But he played 171 grade games. Yeah, right. So talk about a bloke that really put in for the club. Like yeah. Plenty of games in uh, reserve grade and down in President's Cup or whatever the third grade was at the time. Yep. Um, there's a guy that really worked hard to get his first grade shot and, and managed to play 58 games for the Rabbitohs over that time out of 171 grade games. So a good, yeah. good effort there from uh, from Darren Maroon. Now, our trivia question for this week being origin. Now, this is between 1980 and 2020, so not including tonight when we give the answer next week. But how many Rabbitohs have played, while they were playing with the Rabbitohs, have played state of origin for either New South Wales or Queensland? While they were with South, that's your question. Ooh, yeah, good question, week. but uh, but to go back, to, I know we've mentioned it before, but to have eight players in the squad, uh, in both squads tonight, that's a fantastic uh, achievement. And again, far be it for me to give him a rap, but <laughs> LA's in charge of recruitment, and you know, for us to have eight Origin players, it's a fair achievement in terms of the roster that we've got. Yeah. So, so we we'll, we'll but not go. just that. So we've got eight players in the current squad. And you've got Cody Walker and Adam Reynolds that have also played yes. State of Origin. You've got Tom Burgess that plays for England. Yep. You've got um, Junior Totola that plays for Tonga. Yes. <laughs> it's a fair... Oh, geez, we've given him enough raps today. All right, let's, <laughs> let's not go too hard we've on got a, the roster is. We've on. got a commercial manager that played for Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Thank you. Christ he doesn't come under the salary cap, LA. <laughs> Goodness me, after buying the six-bedroom garage in <laughs> Coogee. <laughs> We last I week. can't fit in a cap, a T-shirt, or anything. Don't worry about that. Six <laughs> <bedroom> <laughs> <t-shirt>. <laughs> oh, very good. So very we'll, good, James. We'll, very good. <laughs> how good? We got to get those T-shirts made. What? Very with, good. With, with, with uh, top four podcast on one side and very good on the other <laughs> yes. side. <laughs> they will be very good. <laughs> You won't oh, sell many. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they got plenty of X's on them for real. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're only size three XL and up. <laughs> look, look, look like a Queensland can of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, I can put up with him back. When you start, I'm not bagging I know you. I'm off to. I'm bagging all three of us. You were laughing. <laughs> Very good, right? I will go through that uh, trivia question next week. <laughs> Now, if you're looking for your next epic holiday or we've got the long weekend coming up um, this... Is it this week? Yes, it is. Yeah, when you work in football, long weekends tend to no disappear. Such thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or but if you're hello, every weekend's a, a <laughs> long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're Shannon, they're all long lunches. Yes. <laughs> well, I don't need That's themselves, better, Jeremy. Jez. That's better, Jez. Good fight back there, mate. <laughs> so if you need to uh, take advantage of the long weekend or you want to get to the next game, we play uh, up in Brisbane very shortly and then you we've do. got the game... At uh, the Sunshine Coast as well coming up in about six weeks time so plenty of opportunities to jump onto what if and book your accommodation your flights your car hire and anything else that you need and because they're the official travel partner of the Rabbitohs if you head to whatif.com slash Rabbitohs use the promo code Rabbitohs15 you can save 15% on select hotels and I assume you've jumped on to whatif.com slash Rabbitohs and booked everyone's flights and accommodation for the Sunshine Coast game as we get ready to head up there and do battle with the Warriors. Indeed we have. We've used What If to get our staff up there. It was seamless. Got the 15% discount and we're all very much looking forward to the Sunshine Coast match and I encourage everybody to to get there. It's sold out previously so this is your chance to get away from the cold weather in Sydney. Get up to the beautiful Sunshine Coast. Watch watch the Rabbitohs do their thing and uh, save money while doing it by going through whatif.com. Very good and Ello, let's hope the results are the same as last time. Cody Walker, four tries. 
pulling it out of the fire to beat the Warriors up there. Well, actually, let's hope we do it a little bit more comfortably this time. Yeah. It we're was a, a bit stressful strife. that we're game. We that were. Day. Yeah, Cody had a massive he turn did. the game around. He had a blinder. So let's hope we can get another win up there. So make sure you jump onto whatif.com slash Rabbitohs. Use that code Rabbitohs15. What if it's Aussie for travel? Ello's joke of the week. You missed a pretty good one from Shannon last week, although I did have a heart attack about two-thirds of the way through it. <laughs> as, as we As we all went. Yeah. It was always. the mention of the alcohol and the sex that got Jersey. I got sitting on a bit weak at the knees. It's okay, Jeremy. It's okay. Uh, it was very good. Over to you, Ella. I have to get up and move a little bit. At All right. The end of this joke. So, you know, if you... So it's a visual joke. It's so a bit of a visual one as well. I'll try and get it across as well as I can, you know, through well, the audio. But If, uh, if you're also, listening to the podcast on your podcast app, make sure you jump onto rabbitos.com.au and check out the video version as well. We'll just have a look at the time. It's at about one hour and nine minutes in, you'll need to go through to the video and watch this visual joke from Ella. I'm going to... You know what, that's a preamble and a half. This one would be a very, very good joke. <laughs> no, no pressure, Ella. I've forgotten it. I've forgotten it. It's up there with our live reads no, from well, last it, week. It started, it started out of a tragedy, actually. I mean, oh, what, what happened over in Ireland, there was this um, apartment block, and it was about 15 storeys high, and um, this inferno had raged through the bottom of it. It was going up story by story, you know. Um, and they were trying to evacuate the people, and they got, got to the eighth floor, and still burn, they got most people out. But up on the ledge on the 10th floor of this apartment, there was this lady with an eight-month-old baby oh, standing no. on the ledge and not knowing what to do. Obviously, the lifts and the, the stairs are out inside. She couldn't get out. The fire the fire brigade was there. The ladder only went to the eighth floor, so they can't get out. So what do they do when they got down, down the bottom? What can they do? They get the big blanket out, and they're holding it down the bottom. And the ladies up there are saying, throw the baby first. Oh, dear. She said, no, 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 no. No, she said, I'll jump with the baby. She said, no, 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 no. No, you've got to throw the baby first and we'll catch it down here. She said, I'm not throwing my baby to, any, to anyone. She said, get the great O'Shaughnessy. Get the great O'Shaughnessy here. He hasn't <laughs> dropped a ball. He hasn't dropped a ball in 52 internationals for the Irish soccer team. The great O'Shaughnessy. He's the only person I'll throw it to, right? So... They're all going, this O'Shaughnessy is the goalkeeper for the, the national soccer team. Mm. They said, how the hell is he going to catch it? She said, I will not throw the – unless O'Shaughnessy there, I will not throw this baby. So anyway, the fire's getting up halfway between the 8th and the 9th floor. So the fire brigade said, I don't know, go and get O'Shaughnessy for Christ's sake. We're not going to get anything out of this. So anyway, and the crowd's starting to gather down around watching what's going on. You know, the media's there anyway. They send they send messages. So someone get a shout and see. Oh, he's training or something. So anyway, it's got up to the ninth floor. Okay, she said, I'm not throwing my baby. I don't trust you down there, Baba. I need O'Shaughnessy. I need O'Shaughnessy, the great goalkeeper. So anyway, it happens. Nine and a half stories up. Out of this car comes. The great O'Shaughnessy wow. comes, comes out straight from training in his kit with his boots on. You know, the great the great soccer goalkeeper of Ireland. And the crowd roared when O'Shaughnessy, yeah, O'Shaughnessy's here. She's, and she was there. She was that excited. She nearly dropped the baby. You know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, thank God you've got O'Shaughnessy. Now, they said, look, you've got about 30 seconds till the till the. The fire's going to get to you. You've got to throw the baby first, right? So, so she says, all right, I'll throw it to O'Shaughnessy. Anyway, she's thrown the baby, right? She's thrown the baby in the air. And just as it, the baby started to flow, come down, there's these winds blowing, there's a draft. I know O'Shaughnessy's under the ball, under the baby like this, as if he's under the ball, right? And he's waiting for it to come down. Anyway, the last minute, a big gust of wind comes and the baby, O'Shaughnessy dies full length. And catches the baby about six inches off the ground. The crowd roars. The crowd roars, and he goes, "Bounce, bounce, boom!" <laughs> <laughs> oh my <No>. goodness! <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent. Oh, that's up there with Billy Bloggs from episode one. That was very good. I thought Billy might have been popping in to catch the baby. Actually, oh my goodness. <laughs> Hello. <laughs>
Are you worried about my jokes? That's <laughs> in the baby and drop kick. Oh, <laughs> turn it right oh. Look, the only people he's offended are Irish goalkeepers. <laughs> <laughs> you take yeah, out right. everyone else. I really, I really am going to call family and community services. <laughs> I, did, I didn't offend O'Shaughnessy because he didn't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, very good, Hello. Very <laughs> good. Oh, oh Shannon Donato. You got seven days. Seven days. I'm to ready top to it. rumble, Jez. As I'm he always rumble. says, bring it on. Bring it on. Very good, Hello. Very good. <laughs> very good. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. You can contact us with topic suggestions on Twitter or jumping on to rabbitos.com.au slash podcast. Don't forget forget to give us a review and a five-star rating if you can and subscribe on your podcast app. And don't forget to tune into our other podcasts, as we've mentioned uh, many times, the Rabbitos Radio crew over there with Chaps, Mavo and Brownie. They're doing a great job. And what about all the advertising they're taking out around town? They've got signs up everywhere and... Stickers, you can't get... There's as many Rabbitohs Radio stickers on cards as there are Rabbitohs stickers. I was driving past King's Cross the other day. The Coca-Cola sign was down and the <laughs> Rabbitohs Radio sign was up there. I couldn't believe it. They are absolutely everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Uh, I saw the great chaps. He was away holiday at the same venue I was. Was he? Yeah, last week. Yeah, Did you get a discount? <laughs> <laughs> Who was more well-behaved, you or chaps? Oh, I think him. I saw a well. I saw a post on social media where he said beer o'clock was nine o'clock every day, nine a.m. Oh well, no, I was better behaved than that. Right, you nine thirty. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what? I've seen I've seen Ello. I've seen Ello at the bar pool. You know the pools where you drink in the bar. He's had eight scooters, never got out of the pool once. So, uh, <laughs> needless to say, I don't swim in those no, hotels. I was <laughs> You normally had eight, eight pies by then, too, Shannon, when we got out. Yeah. So, mate, you talk about yellow, y- yellow fever, I tell you what. You at, at one end, there's speckles of beer in the water. At one end, there's all pastry flakes. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot about the hair from my shoulders blocking up the skimmer box in the pool is working <laughs> oversight. <laughs> Uh, very good very good and uh, yes as we say very good um, <laughs> we got the do we? Yeah, what's this yeah. what's this very, very, very good I wish we could egg- <laughs> edit that segment <laughs> the podcast and other game for 10 minutes uh, what about, we what took what all about the very just, goods out. as we always say very good <laughs> what's this we business oh, there's only one of us that says very good oh uh, nice excellent I'm, now I'm trying to avoid saying it so the rap <laughs> Coast Radio podcast. We've got all our midweek interviews that we do with the media, including Wayne's um, pre-game media, which is always good fun. And then we have the audio version of the Rabbitohs Insider too. So you, you don't miss a thing when you subscribe to the Rabbitohs Podcast Network. Of course, it's all brought to you by Audio Technica and presented by What If. And thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Welcome back, Ello. It's been good fun, and we head into that game against the Knights, looking for another two points this week. Yeah, it'll be. Um a good test for us. I mean, coming back after you know six plays in Origin, obviously mm. uh, that's a tough thing. Um, Newcastle, you know, were, were way below their best last week, so they, I think they'll bounce back. Mm. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm looking forward to a good performance. Still, yeah, a couple of blokes I'm looking forward to seeing this weekend are Jack Johns, one of our former players from last year, and also hoping to catch up with Willie Peters. Speaking of great Rabbitohs yes. juniors, he's a, he's a great man, Will, and uh, we still contact each other every now and then, but not this week. No, but um, I'll trip him over up the tunnel or something at Stadium <laughs> Australia on Saturday. Yeah, he's a great guy, Willie. In fact, he's very good. <laughs> <laughs> Righto, enough of this, Red, but you're starting to turn oh, on me you're now. For, you're happy for you're starting to turn on to me. each other. You're starting to turn on me, and when I'm the man with the buttons, <laughs> I get to, I get hey, to decide hey, when we're He's very prickly. Don't worry about <laughs> it. I'm fired up for Origin now, after all that Origin chat. I wasn't ready for it before now, but excellent stuff. Righto, so thank you for joining us. How are your day, you We'll start firing up for Origin about midday, will you, today? Yeah, absolutely. I can't <laughs> wait. Bring it, bring it on. I'll start hydrating early and, <laughs> and looking forward to the match tonight. Hello to everyone down at Pinocchio's on Level 3. <laughs> Put the beers in the fridge. Shannon's on the way. That's a contra pasta meal for me, for sure, that mention. It's got to be. It's got to be that. These mentions don't come for free. Well, they do if you're James Donato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were lucky enough to have lunch on uh, on Friday. I was joined, uh, well, we were joined by James Donato, Shannon's son, oh. and he came in and helped himself to a Pinocchio's pasta and then didn't even look like offering his <laughs> yeah. father if he could chip in for the bill. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> he, went, he went straight to the lift, 
Straight to the Mate. ground. And it, <laughs> for free, for, he'd blow into a funeral, James. <laughs> <laughs> He would have said anything for free. Uh, yeah. He yeah, actually did, he didn't even say thanks, Dad, until we pointed out that he hadn't said thanks, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got a son that's very similar. Don't worry about <laughs> right. Well, as we said, we're all brought to you by Audio Technica and What If, and we will see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Rabbitohs Top Four Podcast, powered by Audio Technica and proudly presented by What If official travel and pathways partner of the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Support the club and visit whatif.com forward slash Rabbitohs to book your next trip. Don't forget to use the code Rabbitohs15 to get 15% off select hotels. Conditions apply. What if? It's Aussie for travel. Please leave us a five-star rating and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Up the Rabbitohs.